And joining us now, 2024 presidential candidate, former New Jersey governor, Chris Christie. Governor, we appreciate your time this morning. I, I want to start with uh, part of your closing you. message last night, which I thought was striking. I'll tell you why in a second. Take a listen. But you can't truly say you love America unless you're ready to open up your heart to every American. I'm going to open up my heart to every American as president, and I will make sure that I return honesty, integrity to the Oval Office. We deserve and should accept nothing less. Governor, I had a, a Republican official, not as a criticism, but after your closing message last night, text me and say, it's a great general election message or a GOP primary message from 2000. Unfortunately, it's 2023. That wasn't a criticism. That was a kind of, oh, well. <laughs> What's your response to that? Uh, I thought the whole idea was to win the 2024 election and to defeat Joe Biden and to show who, in fact, could do that in this field. And when you watched last night, look, the juvenile back and forth between Vivek Ramaswamy and Nikki Haley, um, the non-substantive answers from uh, Ron DeSantis on almost every uh, topic last night, it looked like he had memorized all of his answers and just was relieved when he could finally get them out and get them done. Um, you know, those are not the kind of people who are going to beat the Democrats um, next November. Um, and the fact is, what I wanted to show everybody is what it looks like to be able to take on the Democrats directly um, and to be able to give them a new look at what the Republican Party should look like. Everybody complained about how much we lost on Tuesday night, yet they continued the same rhetoric and the same behavior on the stage last night, all four of them continued the same, and the fifth one, um, ignoring the Republican electorate, ignoring independents um, at a rally in another place in Florida, because he's too much of a coward to get on the stage and defend his record. Um, these folks last night still said nothing about the fitness of Donald Trump for President of the United States. They still dance around it. Um, I'm, I didn't dance around it in my first answer, uh, right out of the box, and I'm not going to dance around it for now, through the end of this race, all the way to the convention. You know, to that point, there is endless discussion about poll after poll after poll. But one of the most striking numbers, I think, in the New York Times Siena poll was what would happen uh, to his Republican support if Donald Trump was convicted and imprisoned. You said this last night. Take a listen. I'll say this about Donald Trump. Anybody who's going to be spending the next year and a half of their life focusing on keeping themselves out of jail and courtrooms cannot lead this party or this country. Right, and Governor. it needs to be said plainly. Governor, do you think that Trump will end up convicted here? Yes. I don't think there's any doubt anymore that on the January 6th case, he's going to be convicted. I want everyone out there to listen to remember something. The first witness against Donald Trump in that trial that starts the day before Super Tuesday is going to be Mark Meadows, his former chief of staff, who is cooperating with the federal government, is going to testify that Donald Trump was lying from election night forward and committed crimes right in front of his eyes. Now, this is not some rogue Democratic prosecutor, and this is not some product of the two-tier justice system that Donald Trump likes to talk about. This is one of the founders of the Freedom Caucus and his former chief of staff, who he referred to as the next James Baker, is going to be sitting 20 feet from him in a courtroom and telling a jury that he committed crimes against the United States. Um, he is going down. The walls are closing in, and he knows it. That's why he won't show up on the debate stage. And I'd say to all of your viewers this morning, look, you want to have someone who's going to actually take on Donald Trump instead of the other four on the stage right now who's going to just dance around the problem? Then go to ChrisChristie.com this morning, donate a dollar to make sure that I'm still on that stage in the next debate in December, because I will take him on directly. Governor, you said last month that if Trump skipped this debate, continued to skip debates, you would follow him around the country. You would ensure that you two had a face-to-face -face back and forth. When does that phase of your campaign start? Well, look, we tried to do it when he went to New Hampshire to register um, for the ballot in New Hampshire. And his campaign closed down the entire state house starting at 8.30 in the morning. Wouldn't let anybody in unless you were on a Trump invite list which I can assure you I would not be, um, and would not let anybody anywhere near the building that day unless you were a sycophant holding a sign and cheering. Um, he's a coward, but we're going to figure out how to get around that, and we're going to make sure we confront him and wait till you see the look on his face that day. Uh, and I, I think folks need to understand this. He has spent the last couple of weeks every day in a courtroom trying to explain why he defrauded banks all across the country with his investments in New York He's going to wind up uh, having to pay a substantial amount of money there, maybe up to $250 million. 
And so if you wonder, does Donald Trump care more about the country or his own money? It's where he's been. He's been in the courtroom defending his money rather than out on the, in the stump going after Joe Biden and defending our country. Just to follow up real quick, do you have a, kind of a mapped out plan for running into him, for confronting him to, to what you were saying there, or is that you're going to figure it out in the weeks ahead? Now, Phil, what we have to do is look at what his schedule is, and he doesn't usually release his schedule weeks and weeks in advance. So this is going to be a week-to-week -week adventure for us. But I can tell you this. Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley have no interest in getting on the same stage with Donald Trump. They won't even mention his name except for a passing glance last night. And still, they're the ones who raised their hands in the first debate, and they haven't come back from it since, to say they would support him even if he was a convicted felon. To me, that's disqualifying. And if you don't think, if one of them is the Republican nominee for president, that you won't be seeing that hand-raised video from Joe Biden and the Democrats every day of the general election campaign, you're dreaming. Governor Chris Christie, it was a substantive debate last night, another one coming up next month. We appreciate your time, sir. Thank you. Great, Phil. Thanks for having me.